This little device right here, this thing might seem pretty benign, but did you know that this little tool here can literally change your life with your dog? And you're about to see this little thing shake up the lives of three Doberman families. And that's because today we're gonna use this little device to do a DNA test on three different Dobermans with a DNA test kit. And these owners are about to learn more about their Doberman story than many people ever find out. I was so worried about that. <laughs> but wait, besides testing these dogs, you're also gonna see their owner's reactions when a veterinarian geneticist actually reveals the results live to them and tells them in no uncertain terms what those results mean for their dog's future. So what does the future of each of these beautiful dogs look like? Well, let's find out. Today, owners Michael and Jackie will be testing their one-year-old female Zeta, who you may have seen on this channel before. And owner Lauren will test her three-year-old male Doberman Apollo, who you may also have seen on here a few times as well. And lastly, a newcomer to Doberman Planet, Savannah, and she'll be testing her four-year-old male red Doberman, Glock. So what are we going to find out about these dogs and how are these owners going to take the news of what their dog's DNA tests reveal? I honestly, I don't know because we've never done anything like this on this channel before. This is going to get really interesting. Let's kick off this journey and get these Dobermans tested. Hey everybody, we're back again with Zeta here. We've decided to get her DNA tested so that we have a little bit of a better idea of what is in store for her going forward. Let's go ahead and get her swabbed. She's gonna love this. We are a little bit nervous that it might come back with a DCM marker or maybe high levels of inbreeding. But we're just hoping that she's a healthy dog and we're given a clean bill of health. Hi everybody, I'm Lauren and you guys already know Apollo. I guess I wanted to get Apollo tested because I wanted to see what genetic health markers he's predisposed to. So uh, let's find out and let's get swabbing. Okay, all packaged up, so let's get ready to send it. It has me a little scared about what it could show as far as the Doberman breed and what they are predisposed to health-wise. Hey everybody, my name is Savannah and this is my Doberman Glock. You wanna say hi? We are here to get him tested so that we can um, learn more about his medical history and see if there's anything that could potentially come up in the future. You ready? Let's do this. I think the thing that I want to know the most is whether or not Glock will be prone to DCM. That's the one thing that I really have concerns about. Hey look, your results are in. Apollo's results just came in. I can't wait to see what they say. They're here. Let's take a look. We decided to have someone very qualified help us out here and reveal the results to our families for the first time live on this channel. It's a veterinarian geneticist with Embark Vet, Dr. Jenna Dockweiler. Now, Dr. Dockweiler got her Doctor of Veterinary Medicine in 2014 and completed her residency at Cornell University in 2017. And she's currently a veterinarian geneticist with Embark Vet. So I think it's fair to say she's definitely the best one to talk to our families and reveal the results today. Let's get all of our families on a video call with Dr. Dockweiler and let's see what these tests have revealed about these dogs. 
Oh, guys, it's so nice to see everybody here. Thank you guys so much for coming together to do this. Um, I think we're going to learn a lot about the DNA results of your amazing Dobermans together. So I want to introduce you real quick to Dr. Jenna Dockweiler. Um, she's a veterinary geneticist with Embark. I think it's fair to say she's definitely one of the most qualified people we could possibly find, uh, at least on this show anyway, to give you the DNA test results that you did on your dog. So thank you, Dr. Dockweiler, for being here and being willing to do this with us today. I appreciate it. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah, absolutely. And so just so you know, just to recap, each of these families, you know, they did a cheek swab with the Embark DNA test and they sent it in. And uh, doctor, did you get the results already from all three? Yep, yep, I have all three results here in front of me. Okay, great, um, our, if we're good to go, let's just jump straight into it. Why don't we start off with Michael and Jackie, who they sent in the cheek swab for their Dorman Zeta. Um, Michael, Jackie, you guys, are you guys ready for us? Yeah, we're yeah. ready. All right. All right, awesome, awesome. So before I start, I just wanna check with you guys. Are all of you familiar with the concept of coefficient of inbreeding? Relatively, yes. Yeah. Being a, a few few nods, kind of equivocal nods. All right, great. So I am going to give those results to you. So just so that you understand what that is, the coefficient of inbreeding or COI, it's abbreviated, is just the measure of inbreeding of an individual. So the more closely related an individual's parents are, the higher that COI is going to be. And that's usually going to be expressed as a percentage, which is how our results are, are returned. So in the dog with increasing COI, we see a couple of effects. Those would be reduced fertility, shortened lifespan, reduced puppy survival, and increased disease prevalence. So there's not really any specific action for you to take with the COI of your individual dog, but I'll just share that just for your interest. And just to give everybody kind of an idea of where we're at, the Doberman average for our Embark tested Dobies are, is 36%, just so you kind of know where we're at. So to start with Zeta, her COI is 47%. So she is a little bit higher than our average but she had one disease variant that we need to talk about, and that would be one copy of von Willebrand disease type one. Are you guys familiar with that at all? Sort of. Yeah. I think when we had her spayed when she was younger, they had tested out for that before mm -hmm. they would put her under. Yep. Yep. Absolutely. And that's a great thing to do in Dobermans because unfortunately this is fairly common in this breed, but this is a bleeding disorder. So essentially dogs with two copies of this gene variant often have low von Willebrand factor, which helps platelets make blood clots. So since she only has one variant, one copy of this variant, she is not likely to experience any increased bleeding due to this variant, which you probably saw when, when she got spayed. I'm sure the result of her test was, was normal. Mm -hmm. And my next question for you guys was going to be, is she a breeding dog? Because this is something that we would want to take into account where she a breeding dog. But since you just told me that she's been spayed, I'm going to go ahead and assume that the answer to that question is no, yeah. um, but it could be important for her family members and for her breeder to know. So just something to keep in mind. Okay, great. So there's nothing they really need to do as a result of the VWD result? There is a, a definitive test that we can do, which is measuring the von Willebrand factor level in the blood. But carriers or only individuals that only have one copy are not expected to have a high rate of clinical science. So unless you guys see like a problem or have any reason to be suspicious of increased bleeding tendencies, then we shouldn't need to do that for her. That's awesome. Like that's, I think that's good news. Next up, we got Apollo, um, which is Lauren's dog. Um, what do we got going on with Apollo? So Apollo's COI was 33%, so that it is about average for the breed, a little bit lower, which is great. And Apollo is actually clear for all of our tested health conditions, which is awesome. <laughs> um, well, just for your interest, it looks like based on his genetics that he's a black Doberman. Is that correct? Yes, black and rust. Yep. Excellent. Excellent. So he does carry uh, red, but he does not carry Duluth. So he wouldn't yes. be expected to if he were a, a breeding dog. Yes. Perfect. Awesome. Great. That, that's about the best news you could possibly get. So now we have Glock and Glock is Savannah's dog. What, what do we got going on for Glock? All right. So for Glock, his COI is 24%, which is a little bit lower than average. Awesome. But Glock does have one copy of a dominant variant that's associated with dilated cardiomyopathy. So it's the DCM1 variant, which is okay. in the PDK4 gene. We do test for two, DCM1 and two. 
So he's got one copy, but it is dominant. So that does increase his risk for dilated cardiomyopathy or DCM. So are you familiar with DCM at all? I think a lot of Dobie people, unfortunately, are. I'm aware of it, but I'm not super informed on it just yet. Okay. Okay, sure. So DCM is characterized by dilation of the heart. So essentially that heart muscle gets big and dilated and it's unable to pump blood forward in a normal fashion once that happens. And the other thing that that can happen with once that heart gets big and dilated like that is the electrical conductivity of the heart can be altered as well. So they can have arrhythmias also. And in general, dogs who are affected with DCM, they typically have kind of two distinct stages. So the first stage would be the asymptomatic stage. So of course, we don't have any clinical signs, but we might be able to detect abnormalities on diagnostic testing. And then that ultimately does progress into an overt stage. And we will obviously see clinical signs at that point, either to congestive heart failure, if that heart can't pump blood forward in a normal fashion, sometimes it can back up. That will lead to fluid buildup in the belly or the chest, typically, or with, with arrhythmias as well. So some of the signs that we might see would be lethargy, weakness, exercise intolerance, and in really severe cases, we might see collapse. Mm -hmm. Um, So when we catch this disease early, DCM can respond to medical management, which can definitely slow the progression of disease. So important for you, any Dobie that has either or both of those DCM variants that we test for, we do recommend yearly monitoring echocardiograms, which is an ultrasound or a sonogram of the heart. Okay. And Holter monitors, which is a wearable like vest device that monitors arrhythmias for a full 24 hours, beginning at about three years of age. So that might be something that that you'd want to pursue with him just to be sure that we can in the early stages and can start him on medications if he does go on to develop disease. And doctor, having one copy of DCM, that's obviously far from any kind of guarantee he'll develop it, right? From my understanding, it's just one of the risk factors. Absolutely. It's one of the risk factors. So this is a very complex disease. One or both of these variants that we test for certainly don't explain every case of DCM that we see in Dobies. And I do have some statistics for you. So these have not been published, but Dr. Kate Muirs at NC State, who is the one who actually discovered both of these mutations, quotes that 37% of Dobermans with that DCM1 mutation, which is what he has, will go on to develop disease. 50% with the TTN or DCM2 mutation are going to go on to develop disease. And 60% with at least one copy of each will go on to develop disease. So certainly not a guarantee, even if a dog does have both of of the mutations that we test for. So Savannah's dog is kind of in the, as far as testing positive on one of the DCM tests, it's in one of the, uh, the lower risk categories. And she has a really low COI number or Glock has a really low COI number as well, right? Yep. Yep. So he's definitely lower than average. Not the lowest that we've seen, but he's at 24% and our average is again, 36. That's great. And is there anything else? So she should maybe do at three years of age, start some of the heart monitoring stuff with her vet. Is there anything, any, I guess nothing diet related would necessarily help, right? Because in Doberman's it's more of a genetic issue. Is that right? Yep, absolutely. So this, this type of dilated cardiomyopathy is distinct from the diet associated cardiomyopathy that we will often see in other breeds that are, you know, not generally predisposed to developing a genetic form of DCM. Did you have a chance just to like look at the breed identification? I mean, are they all, they're all full-blooded Dobermans? Yep, Yep, they are. Full-blooded Doberman? (laughs) They are. I was so worried about that. I was like, what if he's not? (laughs) No, they all said 100% Doberman. Don't worry. (laughs) Okay. That's good news. Well, thank you, Dr. Doc. I really appreciate helping us us out today. Um, Michael, Jackie, Lauren, Savannah, thank you guys so much for being willing to do this so publicly with other Doberman owners, just so we can like everybody can learn from your experience because, you know, the Doberman breed does have its own hiccups, we'll call it in the in the uh, in the health department for sure. And to all you guys, um, all three families, we're going to definitely check in with you guys pretty shortly after some of these results have you know, kind of sunk in with you. And also give you a chance to log in your Embark vet accounts, your dashboard, and check out some of the other cool things that the Embark test reveals, such as, you know, the relative finder, 
the geographic origins of your dog, some trait insights of your dog, what color puppies your dog can make, you know, if they can make white puppies or anything else. Um, I'll give you guys some time so you can go out and check your dashboards and we'll check in with you later after this kind of all sinks in. Wow. Well, we were really surprised by the relatively high coefficient of inbreeding as well as the Von Willebrand's trait that she carries. It was also really cool to test through Embark and see their dashboard, different tools they might have. We could connect with nearby relatives, see if anyone in Zeta's litter ended up nearby. Yep. I think from here, what we're going to do is probably tell the vet, keep them as informed as possible so that it's as easy for us to keep her as healthy as possible. But really, at the end of the day, we just learned that despite the fact that she's a little bit of an inbred hillbilly, we still love her. I can't tell you how much of a relief it was to finally get Apollo's results from Embark, and he was cleared on everything. Now I don't really have to spend time worrying about what he could develop, though it is always a possibility. But we're going to maintain his diet, we're going to keep on running, we're going to keep on exercising, and we're going to just keep on doing what we're doing and live life completely to the fullest. I was so surprised at Glock's COI number. I didn't think it would actually be that low. The relative finder on his dashboard was also very interesting to look at. I'm glad that I was able to get Glock tested. With the marker for DCM1 that they flagged him for, now I can take those results into the vet and see if we can start making a plan, get him in to get him monitored, get him checked out by a cardiologist, and catch it early should it ever show up. Guys, these families you just saw, they're Doberman Planet viewers just like yourself, and each of them decided to take the health and care of their Dobermans to the next level by getting their dog's DNA health tested. I've stressed on this channel before just how important it is with Dobermans since, yeah, I mean, our breed that we love just so much, it does have a few pretty serious genetic issues that many other breeds just don't have to worry about. And because of that, yeah, Doberman owners especially just need to go a little above and beyond when it comes to taking care of our pets. Luckily, Embark has made this very easy for us to do right at home with just a quick, simple cheek swab, just like you saw Michael and Jackie, Lauren and Savannah do with their dogs in this video. They all use this, the Embark Breed and Genetic Health Test Kit, specifically the one that's made for purebred dogs. Um, and it didn't take these owners more than just a few minutes to swab the cheeks and mail their samples off. And in return, they got just some amazing insights into their dogs that they may not have ever gotten otherwise, or maybe not until it was too late anyway. I'll have a link to these exact same kits down in the description below this video. So take a look down there for that link with a little blue arrow. Click on that link and pick up one of these kits for your dog. Oh, and also good news. I spoke with Embark before making this video and they were kind enough to offer Doberman Planet viewers a special discount code. Uh, it's just for us. Just use the code Doberman Planet all one word at checkout when you purchase and you'll save just a bunch of money on these kits too. Thank you for watching today, guys. And if you haven't already, please get your Dobermans tested. Keep being great Doberman breed ambassadors, of course, and I'll see you on the next one. Take great care of your dogs, guys.